So let's look at how uh, SSL actually works. So I am um, on Amazon.com where I basically live. And I'm going through and looking at the different uh, books or, or whatever I, I'm looking at purchasing. Now, you know, I could say I want to purchase this, I want to purchase that. But once I hit checkout, that now the web server is programmed to know that an SSL connection has to be set up because now there's going to be sensitive information uh, sent back and forth, like my credit card information or some type of authentication information. So when I'm just kind of looking around the website, it, we, we don't have to set up an SSL connection. As soon as I hit checkout, then what's going to happen is the uh, the web server is going to authenticate to my browser. And how it authenticates to my browser is it sends over its digital certificate. So remember, the digital certificate, when I, my browser gets it, it's going to see if it's, you know, make sure it's not expired, make sure that the uh, unique ID actually maps with the URL, Amazon.com. Um, and my browser is going to say, do I trust the CA who created this um, uh, certificate? If it's in my trusted list, that means I have the public key for that CA. I'm going to validate the um, signature on, on the certificate. And so once I validate and I trust the certificate, now I pull out the public key for the web server. So the, the web server has, has um, authenticated to me with a digital certificate. And the reason is because I don't trust this web server necessarily, but I trust the CA. So once I validate uh, the certificate, I pull, now I could pull that uh, public key out. Now I have the public key for the web server, and I trust that this really is the public key for that web server. Now my client, my browser, will create a session key a symmetric key and use that public key to encrypt the um, session key and send it over to the uh, browser, I'm s send it over to the web server. So once my browser pulls out that public key, that's the web server's public key, it creates a session key, it takes the public key to encrypt the session key and send it over to the web server. Now the web server and my client, my browser, has the same symmetric key so each side could use that symmetric key to encrypt data going back and forth. So um, I, I could use a symmetric key to encrypt if, uh, my credit card information. The web browser will use it to uh, decrypt uh, and, and read that information. So this is how SSL works. And the, um, the web server always authenticates to the client because the web server is going to require the client to, to authenticate in some other manner. But if, if you think about it, if you're sending your uh, credit card information uh, over to a web server, it should have to authenticate to you. So the web server will always authenticate to the client. Now, you can, an administrator can set up a configuration to require mutual authentication using digital certificates, so the web server could require the client's digital certificate, but that's pretty unusual. Usually it's a one way, and then I have to authenticate to the web server with um, username and password and, and that type of thing. But it's always the, the client that creates the uh, session key. That's important that you know that. It's always the client that'll create the session key, e no matter if there's a one way uh, authentication with di digital certificates or if it's a two way.